another honest conversation on the Jewish question. Uh, please like and subscribe if you think these conversations are important. Uh, I have with me um, Mr. Beat, uh, social uh, studies teacher. Uh, I, I've seen many of your videos, actually. You made uh, a ton of videos, I think, about every subject <laughs> under the sun. If it has to do with social studies, you made a video about it. Uh, very impressive, I have to say. Uh, lots of subscribers as well. Uh, kudos on that. And uh, you also made a, a video recently on um, uh, why the people uh, hate the Jews. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, in this uh, uh, in this video, uh, you quote you kind of go through a historic uh, uh, timeline of sorts, and you also uh, uh, quote one reason, which is uh, that people who hate Jews often hate other people. Uh, th there's sort of kind of a general reason. I, I wonder, is it that simple? Uh, we see that uh, anti-Semitism is on the rise, um, and general hate of Jews is on the rise again, uh, and it seems that. Um, once again, every bad thing that happens in the world is blamed on Jews. Uh, and even criticism against Israel uh, quickly turns to anti-Semitism. And we see also in the uh, United States, um, uh, I've been investigating this, and Dr. Lightman uh, with me has been talking about it extensively. We see a, a lot of parallels between Nazi Germany and what's happening um, in America. And although there's no government-sponsored discrimination of Jews yet, um, it, it is clear that there's, there's a general trend. It's not just a, a blip on the radar. It's, this is something persistent. So uh, we want to really talk about that. And uh, also with us today is Dr. Lightman, um, arguably the world's foremost authority on the authentic wisdom of Kabbalah. And uh, in the last few years, uh, you have been teaching, writing, talking wherever possible uh, about the phenomenon of anti-Semitism, uh, the root cause of it, and also the proposed solution according to the wisdom of Kabbalah. So I'd actually like to start with you, Dr. Lightman, uh, and maybe you can tell us uh, in brief, uh, so we all hear, why, um, according to Kabbalah, why do people hate Jews? What is the nature of this persistent hatred that's uh, following this group of people, that hard to define group of people for so many years? Seems like it's not going away. Uh, what do you think is that? And Matt, by all means, this is a conversation. I don't want to be just kind of moderating it, managing it. If you want to say anything, jump in by all means. I want to keep it as open, as honest as possible. Uh, don't spare. <laughs> yes, okay. Excellent. So, Dr. Lightman. Any, uh, well, um, my, uh, my initial profession was biocybernetics. And that was the, my first uh, profession that I studied in university. And then a few years later, when I started to delve deeper into that profession, which is about how the systems of life operate, especially in the human body, it eventually led me to study the wisdom of Kabbalah, as it studies the systems that are not just those that operate the human body, but that op operate the entire universe, meaning the still vegetative, animate, and human levels as a single integrated system. And so I began to research more and more. I also did my PhD in Kabbalah and philosophy, in addition to to biocybernetics. And what I what I now know, I'm, I'm willing to to briefly explain. What I'm seeing is that anti-Semitism is a law of nature, of nature. It's not coming from people directly. What I'm observing here is a very unique problem that has to do with the dynamic of the people of Israel and the world. They're both intertwined in a single system and we can't actually do something about it unless solve the root problem of it. And if we do that, then we can solve it for the people of Israel and for the whole world. So maybe I'll speak for like, I'll try to wrap it in, in five minutes 
to make it clear. The people of Israel is not a regular nation. Where do they come from? They come from ancient Babylon, say about 3,500 years ago. The cradle of human civilization began there, in that area. And they lived well. And this is also what is mentioned in the biblical scriptures. And the situation suddenly changed between human beings there. Human beings began to be in conflict. Within, say, a decade or two, the social status changed for the worse from one end to the other. And one of the spiritual leaders of the people in those times, uh, when King Nimrod was the ruler, and one of the spiritual leaders of the people there was Abraham. He started researching what is going on with the Babylonians who begin to be in riots and conflicts with each other, and some sort of evil erupted between them. And what he realized and attained was that there is a very unique natural dynamic going on, which is that the human ego is evolving. It is rising in, a, in an exponential kind of way. And correspondingly, we have to make some sort of compensation for that growth of ego, meaning how to rise above that growth of the human ego and maintain uh, the connection between people. So he understood that this is a law of nature, that we have to raise human connection positive human connections in order to, to meet that growth of the human ego and maintain unity. And so he developed a method around that. And he called upon people who wanted to join him. Those who joined him, joined him were people who understood that this is the right thing to do, that this is the way to solve the Babylonian crisis, the crisis of Babylonian society. And he organized that group as a separate group. Later on, over time, they left Babylon to, and moved towards the, the place which is now called Israel. And they also called themselves, that group called itself the people of Israel. It's a combination of the words Yashar and El, which means straight to the higher force. He discovered that there is a negative force and a positive force in nature. It doesn't matter how you call it, but he discovered that essentially there are two forces that are working together in nature. And the ego... The, the negative force evolves by itself and the positive force is something that we consciously need to extract from nature to balance the negative force. This is something he called love covers all crimes, which means that the positive force of connection always has to be above the negative force of egoism. And that group, which came with him, were actually representatives of all the people who lived in Babylon. That group that detached from Babylon, they began to live the way that we, we know from the biblical writings and from history. And all the rest of the Babylonians who were dealing with the growth of the human egoism but without trying to live in unity and social harmony, they eventually scattered throughout all the continents. This is, by the way, what uh, Josephus uh, Flavius writes about beautifully in, in his books and, and some other historians. Now, what's happening here is that this group, which was called the people of Israel, held on to what Abraham gave, gave it for a few hundred years, meaning they maintained that social unity. As a symbol, they also built that, that temple, which represented that unity between them. And later on, their ego kept growing. 
And they were able, for a certain period of time, to cover it, to compensate for it with a positive force of unity, positive force of connection. But eventually, they failed. Human beings, like all human beings. And when they couldn't overcome the negative force, then they lost their unity and also their, their temple was destroyed and they were scattered ac across the nations. That was already about 2,000 years ago. Now, what we see throughout the generations, throughout all this history, is that this group, which was a model and a representative of all the different nations of the world that existed back then in Babylon and also now, so it's like you have in that group, in that nation, you have representatives of all nations. And so when that group maintained unity, and there were short periods of time like that in history, the world was also in the direction of unity and peace. And the other way around, if that group is cannot overcome the, the negative force of hatred and evil and separation, then the world also moves towards separation and conflict all the way to war. And this is also what uh, ancient books write about and to this day. And, and the wisdom of Kabbalah that I, that I engage in and, and that I studied as a profession also says that that group the people of Israel, because it, it's a result of all the nations of the world, if it maintains this force of connection, which we, is what we know from the biblical verses as love thy friend as thyself, or don't do to others what you hate to be done to you, etc., that represents that connection they need to maintain to influence the entire world. And if they do that, it will influence the whole world, even without doing it outwardly, even without advertising it. And that's because all of us, it's because all of us human beings are interconnected, just like all trees are and all the biosphere, and we're all connected and integrated. And so in that interconnection, if that group called the people of Israel begins to connect in a positive way, in a beautiful way, then all the other people will follow that as well. And if the, that group doesn't do that, doesn't work on that, then there's an instinctive hatred that emerges towards that people, the group of Israel, that group called Israel from the whole world. And that's the true cause of anti-Semitism. So that's what I tried to, to, to explain in brief. So I actually don't blame anyone for in the world for their anti-Semitic sentiments. In fact, I'm, I'm closer to, rather than blaming, to explain to everyone and to all the Jewish people that they have to be positively connected because that is what will bring good to them and the world. That's really, Matt, what, all I wanted to, to say in short. No, that's a, if you don't mind me ch chiming in here. Um, Go ahead, that, man. That's, a lot of that's really new to me. I, I haven't heard that. Um, my video that I researched and came out a year ago, it was, um, it mostly covered what happened after the, the, the first diaspora, the, the, like, after um, the Romans, um, like st first started to place laws and, and different Jewish groups were scattered all over the place. And, and so like, I think that's an interesting point because I noticed, uh, of course you probably already know this, um, Leo, uh, the comment section of my video is pretty horrific, but I noticed there's a, a lot of people on there who apparently talk about the real Jews. They, they use that because there's different, um, uh, sex within that, that they say, well, the, the real Jews are the ones that we should be um, fighting for. And, and so, yeah, that unity <laughs> that uh, uh, the doctor has mentioned, I think that's, uh, 
that's something that, that kind of I wasn't prepared for because it's yeah, like holy crap, that's a, where a lot of this hate is originating, and it's not just uh, you know everybody else uh, with their own um, objectives. It's interesting. I've, you know, I've been uh, studying with, with Dr. Lightman for for a while and uh, hearing these ideas and. Uh, uh, also, as a very rational person, uh, it, it also kind of seemed hard to um, accept that there's, there's this really a systemic issue here. It's not just simply one group hating another group, like kids in a playground. There, there are forces at work. And I think in the beginning of your video, you talk about how Jews could be these people or those people. Maybe you're Jew from conversion. Maybe you're Jew from uh, birth. Maybe you, uh, uh, maybe you, uh, you tied to a certain ethnicity. Maybe to uh, to a certain uh, view of the world. Maybe you don't practice. Maybe Jews define definition. Uh, um, I wonder, um, Dr. Leitman, what is really the definition of uh, of a Jewish person according to uh, uh, according to Kabbalah? Because you mentioned that Jews were representatives of all other nations. So maybe it's possible that this is one of the one of the reasons, one of the issues. Yeah, I mean, I just went, I just went by the definition that's straight up in the dictionary or the encyclopedia. It's like <laughs> you know, uh, that it's both because uh, it's such a diverse group that. Uh, but the, the two key parts are that it's a religion, but so it's a religious group that people identify with, but it's also an ethnic group. And so that's not something you can say necessarily about all religious groups. I think that makes them unique is that um, there's kind of this. There's, I would say, especially in the United States, there's a large Jewish population that is not very religious at all. In fact, many would identify as atheist, but they uh, ethnically are Jewish. Um, at least that's, I mean, I even have a couple of friends who would identify that way. And, and so, like, um, if you try to, like, complicate it too much, I think, like, my, my videos typically are aimed at an audience that's kind of introduced to big ideas. And so I don't dig too deep, but that's how I would simplify it. So, no, so I wonder, Dr. Leifman, what, what is uh, what is really a, um, a, a real Jew in, uh, in, in this sense, as, as Matt says? What, what is the Jew? Are those Jews who are atheists also Jews? Uh, who, who are those? What are those Jews uh, that people really have this strong feelings towards? Well, the definition I can give is based on the wisdom of Kabbalah. The wisdom of Kabbalah doesn't uh, look at religion, nationality, uh, or ethnicity. It talks about human beings. Every person, just like in the times of Abraham, who is drawn to unity, to common humanity with other people in order to maintain that condition of love thy friend as thyself. This is what was later considered the great rule of the Torah. So according to that, one can be called a Jew. All the rest are either called Jews according to their history, their genealogy. You can call them Jews, but there are, this is not the actual definition of Jews. Obviously, we understand there's a difference between the essence of a human being, what, what he is really, and just the, the flesh and blood. And so, according to Kabbalah, we have to see the essence of things. And a Jewish people, a Jewish person, person means the one who wants to follow the condition of love thy friend as thyself, meaning one who's drawn to human unity. Because he is drawn to be in that group, a part of humanity that leads the work against the evolving human egoism, to balance the human egoism and bring the world to a balanced place. I can also add that, in fact, there is, there is no there is no uh, work here that, that involves those who don't think that way, meaning only people who support this are those who need to follow this unity and are, are destined to drive the world to that. The world today, as 
many of us can already see, is moving as if by centrifugal forces to greater and greater separation that can lead to an explosion. The human egoism is constantly growing, humans are becoming more alienated from each other, and we're becoming desensitized to it, we're becoming, uh, we're agreeing that we have nothing to do about it. But there's a method that says, no, we can unite, and it is possible to achieve a peaceful, safe, pleasant human life if we discover by what forces, by what natural means, we can be positively connected. Not that one tries to conquer the other or one tries to threaten the other, but to actually maintain a healthy human relationship. I, I think from what I'm saying that you're you would also be in support of something like that. The problem is just that in the world, there is no means, no power to do this. And the power to do this exists in the Jewish people, or what's called the group, the, the, the people of Israel. And if they won't do this, then the world gradually dives into conflict, which can end in a third world war and other crises that are fast approaching. So the world's claim towards the Jews saying that the Jews are the source of troubles in the world, it's not that they are directly the source of troubles in the world, but they are a source for the lack of correction in the world. And in that respect, I actually agree with those who, who blame Jews or even what, we, what you would call anti-Semites. I, I understand where their complaint emerges from, where it originates from. And correspondingly, I also understand what we as Jews or not Jews, what we all have to do to work together to bring the world to peace and balance. Uh, I'm curious, Matt, you, uh, you teach in a school. Schools are usually like a microcosm for uh, what's happening in the world. Uh, do you see uh, some of those things that uh, Dr. Leibman is describing, like this breakage, um, people are more isolated, harder for people to get along, this kind of machine is a little grinding to a halt. What, what do you see in schools? Or is everything like nice and... <laughs> no, honestly, uh, I kind of see the opposite. I think young people today are much better human beings overall than my generation was like when I was in high school in the late 1990s. I mean, I feel like this is purely anecdotal and I have no research to <laughs> back this up. But I think there's something that people treat each other nicer today overall. And I noticed the big reason why probably is because um, they know that if you say something that's hateful or that makes you look bad, it's, there's a good chance it's going to be recorded there's a good chance you're being watched and there you can't get away with stuff like t today that like you used to before the, uh, you know, all the surveillance and internet and uh, just instant communication. So I think that that's an interesting kind of um, I think trend that kind of counters um, like this. Cause I, I, uh, I do understand that um, the internet also can make it so that we do kind of, get nestled into our echo chambers a little bit more. We do, uh, we kind of, uh, we find, we seek out people that agree with us and we stick with them. And then therefore we, we, as a society, we become more fractured. I get that. There's those two things at odds with each other. Um, but I'm not entirely pessimistic. I think, uh, overall, I think we've actually made huge progress. And I think, uh, when people say, well, you know, like, um, it's because I get so, uh, these horrible comments on my video that, um, you know, it's just saying there's this horrible anti-Semitic comments that, um, people say, why don't you, you just disable the comments or you, uh, delete all the ones. Well, for starters, it's very difficult for me to, to delete all the ones cause it gets so many. But the second thing I, I want to say, and this kind of, I think is in the spirit of the doctor here, like, because we don't want to shut down these conversations. We want to open up the, even if one side says horrible things, mm -hmm. I think um, there's a opportunity. There's an opportunity to teach these people um, that hey, uh, what you have learned is based on misinformation and propaganda. So much of it, 
is is propaganda and and it's not even like necessarily propaganda that was um like there wasn't that necessarily that much of it but because of the momentum of hundreds if not thousands of years people just they fall into these belief systems these anti-semitic beliefs and so i think um if we just we don't if we ignore the the root cause of this that's why i'm surprised that nobody really made a video like this on youtube well they did but it wasn't what I mean, like I was like, this is really important conversation to have. Like, where is this all coming from? It's more than just recent. Like, <laughs> we can go back and see, like, some of the you can pull quotes from hundreds of years ago. It's like, oh, that could have came from some troll on the internet just today. I mean, so I think it that di- dialogue back and forth and the I, I mean, I I think it's it's good to. Um, have these conversations. And if you shut down one side, they're just going to get even more radicalized. They're just going to continue to um, dig in their heels and stay isolated. So, so, so let's, so let's talk about the solution really, because uh, I, I think the the one thing interesting that I'm finding is that um, uh, we've had a few conversations like that. Um, I listened to Dr. Lightman's um, talks with other people uh, for, for quite some time and years, actually. And I think there's general consensus about the problem. Yes, there is a problem. Yes, there's this group of people that defies definition. Uh, the Wisdom of Kabbalah gives a uh, very interesting uh, explanation, uh, you know, historically, kind of considering everything, all the events. Uh, and it's not um, entirely uh, implausible that there's this group of people who... Uh, are united around an idea, an ideology. Uh, they're a little different, and you can actually see it throughout history. That is, that that much is clear. Uh, you can also see. I, I saw um, there are there are great books. Uh, there's a book that was written by uh, Dr. Lightman and his team, uh, like a bundle of reads that also details kind of like throughout history how whenever the Jews were together. The general state of the country they were in was better. The attitude of people around them was better towards them. As soon as they started to kind of break apart, the reaction from the environment around them was very, uh, very clear, very, very decisive expulsion from Spain, from England, from France, from, you know, in every country that they've been part of. And um, the, so I think that the, the problem is clear. The question is really about the solution. Like, what do we do about it? Uh, and I'm curious to hear you know, both Matt's perspective, maybe as, as an educa- educator specifically, uh, how would you kind of approach this? And then uh, also Dr. Lightman's uh, perspective uh, as a Kabbalist, like what does the wisdom of Kabbalah um, think about? And uh, so whoever wants to start first, uh, you know, maybe Matt. Um, yeah, I can probably start because you probably have a word. I probably have a worse answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, like uh, I think, you know, I teach in a, I have a, I teach a pretty small high school in Kansas. So it's not, I've taught at different schools throughout my career. And so this is, but I I can tell you that, um, so much of hate, hatred is, is rooted in ignorance. This, I know that's almost cliche to say that, but we, we, we can't forget that it's so true. I mean, we have a lot, so many, like, if you just ask people why, like if, Oh, I hate this group, and I and I and I'm going to universalize this because I think this is not just a problem with, um, you know, hate against Jews. It's a it's a hate against. I see this against with political parties today. Look look at the division between Republicans and Democrats. It's 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 gotten to a point now where people don't even talk to each other anymore. So, the, if you start by asking these people, why do you hate this? this other side or, um, whatever the other is with capital O. Um, and then once they try to explain it, um, I think it immediately falls apart. Um, but you can't just stop there. You have to continue to, I mean, I'm a, I'm an educator. Obviously that's what I do. Like you've got to just as whatever way possible, you've got to educate the masses. I think, um, the fact that um, my video has done so well is very promising. I, uh, it's been a little scary because I didn't expect it to do so well. Um, and so sometimes I worry about my family's safety because I do get some hateful comments. But at the same time, um, I think they appreciate the fact that I'm not deleting these comments and I'm sometimes interacting them and I'm 
with them. And I'm saying, I'm asking them, why do you believe this? And almost always they give just kind of answers that just are ridiculous. But, but if, if you, if you don't, I think uh, you've got to poke and prod. You've got to like challenge these people. Same thing with flat earth, same thing with cl- climate change denial. You can't just marginalize these people and put them in a corner and say, this, they've got radical beliefs, let's just ignore them. No, you've got to get everybody, like we keep saying here, we are all on the same team. We're all human beings here, and we've got to communicate. Whether I, I don't care if one side has a ridiculous viewpoint. We've got to interact with them. So interaction and then uh, poking and prodding, questioning them why they believe they, what they do, and then uh, trying to give them the facts whenever possible, the facts. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Dr. Lightman, uh, what do you think is the solution? And, and is it the same solution as Matt suggests uh, to general uh, hate between people, between groups? Yes, uh, there's no doubt that the general human ego is always growing. However, the question is, how do we balance that? How do we how can we actually bring about some balance? According to the laws of nature, the way I studied them, both in biocybernetics and from the wisdom of Kabbalah, and also what general philosophy acknowledges, and the history of the people of Israel. What I'm seeing from all these sources is that essentially it's about human connection. That's the solution. And that solution needs to to happen by that group that can enable it, that group called the people of Israel. And they're not maintaining that, that positive connection. And because they are representatives of the rest of humanity, what happens in them replicates and ripples through to the nations of the world and the other way around. When they maintain positive human connection, then if they do that, then the mutual hatred and animosity will subside. And that is the origin for why they're they're being blamed for all the troubles in the world. Now, I'm not an anti-Semite, God forbid. On the contrary, I'm just trying to point to the law of nature. And because I see it as a law of nature, you can't say whether it's good or bad. It's just how it works. If there is a group of humanity that was collected from all of humanity to bring a greater level of human connection, it has to enable it. It has to maintain that. And otherwise, it creates hatred. Otherwise, hatred to hatred of Jews is simply irrational. There's no way to understand how it sticks throughout history and mutates and evolves and reappears and resurfaces again and again. And now in our time, it rises again together with the hyperconnected world, the online world. And even though humanity has gone to space and did whatnot, and it it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So what I'm saying is that for thousands of years, it is written that this is a law of nature. And that's the origin of this phenomenon, that the Jews, as the representatives of the rest of the world, have to make peace between them, say, between 10 million people. That's it. And then the the whole world will be able to, to, to be in peace as well. And so, in my view, what I think needs to be done is to spread that knowledge all over the world and say that to the world. And the whole world can even express its request from that group to bring about positive human connection. And then we will see that the whole world accordingly will calm down and all countries and nations will come together. I understand it sounds a bit um, maybe far-fetched, like some sort of a legendary dream, but it's a very ancient research that to this day 
shows that, that, it's, that it's true, that it just keeps happening. <laughs> That's it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm actually, I, I want to challenge just one, one thing, and I think that's the, that's the sticking point that I, uh, I also saw in comments on other videos uh, that, that we made, uh, and that is sort of uh, the idea that uh, uh, people need the, Jew, the, peop the Jewish people's help uh, to connect. Like, why can't we just kind of get along ourselves? As Matt said, you know, we're, we're all humans, we're all in this together. I think that basic understanding is there. And yet, uh, um, we, we hear from the from the wisdom of Kabbalah that, that no, there's it has to be arranged or some somehow exemplified by this one group of people that I don't even know who they are exactly, but they somehow have to lead the way, you know, yet again, so to speak. It, <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> my dream, my dream is that all nations of the world will pressure from all directions those Jews and tell them, unite, connect. That's the only thing we want from you. And then maybe we'll see it happening and it will radiate to all the nations in all the world. It's a law of nature. So may I ask, um, Dr. Leitman, um, like, what's the responsibility of the state of Israel then with the, what you're saying? Like, what's their responsibility specifically? To show everyone that the people live, who live there are in unity and balance between them. And then also the Arabs won't won't be in conflict with us. I live here in Israel, and I'm telling you, if we do that, then we will be able to make peace with the Arabs as well. The whole problem is in the Jews. The problem is that the Jews can't get along. Just look at what's happening in this little country right here that is surrounded by enemies and, and aggressors, and still we are always in constant conflict between ourselves. You know, I, I read, I have to jump in because, uh, again, I, I grew up in Israel. I live in Brooklyn. I grew up in Israel. Um, and oh, just recently, I read uh, um, uh, a bunch of papers that talk about all the, um, the plans that were made prior to the Holocaust to get Jews out of Europe, settle them in other places in the United States, and, and how Jews themselves... Uh, he living here objected to that. Jews in Israel objected to that. that like the, the the this unity just among this one group is staggering. It's um, I mean, I I found that I was shocked. Um, but the, 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 again, the thing that sticks to me is like, Dr. Leifman, are you saying that no one else can do it? Only Jews can do it first. Look, they, you're saying it's a, it's a shock to, to hear it. It's not, if you, because if you realize that they're not one single nation, they're actually a representatives of all the nations, they're a model of all the world, that's why it's not a wonder that they, it's so, so hard for them to, to connect. It's not an, an original nation like Germans or French or English, etc. It's, it's, it's a few people from all nations who were brought together by Abraham about 3,500 years ago. That's it. And so when you look at them and you say, why can't you be like any other nation? They can't. They cannot be like the others because they are a, a collection, an amalgamation of many nations. And that's why if they begin to unite, all the rest of the people will unite as well because we're all connected. And so this is a global problem that we have to explain. It belongs to all of us. We, it is shared by all people on all continents. We have to come to a state where everyone knows the, this root cause and also why do the world why does the world hate the Jews why are they blamed for everything all the time because subconsciously each and every nation feels that they somehow are the root of the problem why they don't know they themselves don't understand why but it's actually that way
That's actually the dynamic. Look, uh, there's all kinds of uh, newer nations that have evolved, uh, Korea, uh, you know, in, in, in the Far East. And they became greater anti-Semites, according to surveys, than Europeans, not even knowing who the Jews are or, or having a lot of acquaintance with them. But they deeply feel, inherently they feel, that their problems, their conflicts are... are um, are because of the Jews. It's something that emerges from within. I've researched this for many years. So our whole work that we need to do, it's not, it's not about Jews and anti-Semitism and whether someone is violence here or there. All the work that needs to be done here is to bring peace to the world to bring the world a, a positive way forward. That's why there needs to be pressure, but just pressure, just mild pressure on the people of Israel, the Jews, the state of Israel as well. All of this complex, so they will be positively connected. And then we'll see a better world taking shape for everyone in all human engagements, in every area, because that is how our human ego will come to balance and will avoid a lot of conflicts and crises. And that includes domestic violence or robbery or killings or, or everything that has to do between human beings. Because what will happen in that group, the people of Israel, will calm down, will balance the general human ego of the world. And then we will all be driven towards balance. Well, I will say... I, I think I've, I've said it all in brief. Matt, if you, if you want to... Um, maybe I, I could send you whatever uh, books on the issue or anything. If you're interested, I'll, I'll be happy to send you more materials. Yeah, that'd be great. I, yeah, I would love to learn more. Um, one thing I noticed uh, with my research is there is quite a high percentage of anti-Semitism today that is directly tied to Zionism. That um, and so I feel what you're talking about with the responsibility of uh, the Jewish people today. Um, I feel like I think in a, in a way you're kind of more specifically talking about Israel because they're kind of they're this symbol in in a way too. In addition to the only. Um, <laughs> Right, because they have a certain opportunity. They're now in a country of their own that has its own borders and government, etc., and they have the ability to do this. I live here, and I have thousands of students here, but to penetrate the, the people and convince them or talk to them, or I just give up. It's... <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think... The that's something I mean, really solving the uh, Arab Israeli conflict, I think, might be the most, most realistic way to end anti Semitism. However, you solve it, <laughs> that's obviously one of the, the <laughs> things. Uh, but I mean, uh, I, I think maybe that's something that you know, efforts began decades ago on that. I don't understand why, I mean, it's still an ongoing thing. It's still, uh, there are still big issues, as you guys know, you live there, you currently live there. So I, maybe that's where we should focus our efforts into, like, um, whether it be a... I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe you'll have, you'll have some ideas. I'll, I'll, how to do this, I'll be happy to hear. Oh, I have ideas. I don't know if they're good or not, but... I, I, I'm wondering before, we, you know, we're coming to, we're about to wrap up. Um, but I have, I have a question because, uh, Dr. Avan, yeah, you know, we keep saying that well, the Jews have to connect, those representatives of the world have to connect. They have to somehow uh, start this chain reaction and then the rest of humanity will, will kind of follow suit either through example or a change of heart. I don't know. What, what, what does it mean to connect? What do they have to do? Like, what do they uh, literally have to do? What is the practical thing they have to do? 
They have to realize first that the well-being of the world depends on them, that they are responsible. And the world will not let them calm down and escape this. On the contrary, they will, the suffering will increase. This is a period that is only now beginning. What happened in Germany or in medieval times was only was a small thing compared to what can happen. From this time on, from our time, since we've been given an opportunity and all the means at our disposal, so to speak, if we don't begin to make this powerful connection between us without taking anything into account, not what's happening in the world around us, just focusing on that human connection and unity. If we don't do this, it will bring troubles to us and to the world until the world will pressure us with cruelty. So we should also therefore communicate this knowledge to the people of the world, to all the nations, that their pressure could be a positive pressure could be helpful pressure, just like uh, it's written it's written by one of the prophets that the nations of the world can assist the people of Israel, the Jewish people, in connecting, and then that unity will spread to the world and bring peace to the world. So I'm hopeful, very hopeful, that by conversations like this, like um, like I just like, like this conversation with Matt, that we will come to a state where more and more people will hear and realize that just just hatred, plain hatred, doesn't help anyone. It needs to be a direct pressure that is very specific to towards unity and to drive the, the Jewish people towards connection and understanding how the whole of humanity is a system that needs to come to balance. And that is what will bring peace to the world. Amen for that. <laughs> yeah, um, I think breaking down walls, both figuratively and literally, I think was will help with that. I, I mean, I can't... Um, I don't want to overstep bounds. I'm not Jewish. Um, my most of my family is actually Catholic, um, although most people online think, assume I'm Jewish because of my videos. <laughs> um, but like, uh, I will say that there needs to. I, I would kind of. I'd say that it has to be the whole world. I can't just. I. I, I don't. Um, of course, it has to be both sides. The um, both whatever that means. But it's really like a million sides. But there just has to be these no more walls. Like um, if we I mean, if you look at um, integrated societies, I think um, there's the research actually is pretty promising um, so societies that are more integrated, uh, where there's different ethnic groups, different religions, backgrounds, uh, you know, for, you look at uh, like uh, a city like Toronto, Canada. It's one of the most diverse cosmopolitan places on the planet. It's one of the most peaceful places and beautiful cities on, on Earth. People from all over the world. Like if you walk or, or down a street in Toronto, um, you would be amazed by how many different languages you hear, how many different uh, clothing styles, different types of food you can buy. Um, I feel like that should be the model moving forward. We, we are beyond, I, I think the it's almost petty like some of these divisions that still permeate cultures everywhere it's like that why like uh there's 7.5 billion of us now the planet is smaller than it's ever been we're looking now at maybe colonizing mars the moon at least and yet you have these divisions and a big reason is because you still have these walls you still have these um artificial boundaries in fact i you know you start to i even start to question the idea of borders themselves like um uh, i know geopolitics is still a very real thing but there has to be a point where governments start to work together say hey how about we just make these borders more open well, like how that that would go i think that would make big strides in terms of unity 
I, I want to, will that work, Dr. Lightman? I mean, opening the borders, just uh, embracing everyone. I mean, that that's a question on, on my mind as well. Like, is it, are we waiting for no. everyone to just have no. a change of heart? No. No, it cannot help. Because it, right now, if you open borders, things will get worse. Because until you drive that group of Jews to be together in unity, the whole world will not be able to be in unity, and therefore it's not worthwhile to open borders. Look at Europe. They just started opening borders, and things, look what happened. And things are going to get worse rather forcing the people of Israel to be in unity, then you can create unity in the world, and then you can open borders. That's the, the well, dynamic. Yeah. It has to be a gradual process. I'm not saying open the borders right now. Nobody is saying that. I think but that should be something we strive for. Right. And, and no, and, yeah, again, yeah. And, ah, for sure, for sure, absolutely. I'm definitely in favor of all the world becoming one for all. But, but this group of called Jews, those who have this um, this training, this desire for it, as, as Kabbalah explains, they have to start this process. Like, if you can, in one word, I'm just very curious. I know we can over, over time, but why is this one group the one that has to start the process? Why can it kind of like happen just, uh, you know, organically around the world? You know, like, you know, in Matt's class. <laughs> Because there is no other group that includes representatives of all the nations that ne need to create that unity that can radiate that unity to all the other nations. You don't have that other model. There's, it's not just Jews. It's a group that was founded, that was established that way 3,500 years ago. And that's why they possess that ability. Today, the world is gradually diving into greater and greater conflict, globally integrated conflict, and it's going to increase more and more between more and more nations. And only if you will be able to create this connection in that group, then you'll see results in the entire world. This is something that's written throughout history since that time, since the Babylonian times. So this is just, I'm just saying we should all know about this and understand there is a method of connection that can peacefully be realized. And if this small group does it, it will ripple through and enable all people to connect. All right, I, I, I would just uh, hope everyone, all of us, to, to have success in this. And, um, and maybe we'll talk again if you... If you wish, and also uh, good, good luck in everything. Again, I mean, fascinating. Uh, thank you, uh, Matt, uh, Mr. Beat. Is it Matt or Mr. Beat? You can call me Matt. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Matt. Thank you, Dr. Lightman. Uh, for uh, everyone watching this, if you like it, please like it, share, subscribe, leave your comments. Uh, even the terrible ones, as Matt said, that's fine. We want to hear everything. We want to try to get to the bottom of this topic and, and talk about it more. And we'll see you in the next talk. Thank you, everyone.